it's a really, really rainy morning, so perfect opportunity to go and do my laundry. So, you can expect some gratuitous, gratuitous? You can expect some gratuitous nudity in the next couple of minutes. So, be prepared, switch off, turn away, lock up your daughters, sons, or whoever, and uh, come and have a look. Let's start my Berlin day. And hope you enjoy. I wear this t-shirt just in case that you don't know where I'm waking up. Ah. So, the weather is as typical as the weather can only be described in the past, uh, well, for the whole of 24, basically. It's a mix of rain and sun. So, it's a really, really rainy morning. Perfect opportunity to go and do my laundry. The great thing about having friends is that they have a washing machine, so perfect opportunity to do a bunch of laundry so that I can get on the road again for a couple of weeks, um, actually months. So while the laundry is uh, being done, I thought I'd tell you about Berlin. But let's be honest, what can I say about Berlin that you haven't seen on TV or in some travel guide before? Usually when I say I go to Berlin or I used to live in Berlin, the young people, let's call them the young people, the first they say is like, oh yeah, rave parties, Berghain, that's Berlin. And um, that's not my Berlin, let's be honest. I always have to tell those young people that Berlin was hip and trendy and ravey a hundred years ago already. But nobody knows. Not none of that generation anyway. Maybe we should talk about the roaring 20s, the golden 20s. Berlin. Berlin was in those days competing with Paris, not with London. London wasn't that big in those days. It was Berlin and Paris. The reason I'm bringing this up, okay, this is like, uh, oh, oh, okay, this is how my brain works, but the reason I'm bringing this up, the roaring 20s or the golden 20s in Berlin, pre-World War II, is a conversation I had with a millennial. I think that's what they're called nowadays. I made a flippant comment about money and I started singing like, oh, money makes the world go round, the world go round, a mark, a yen, a buck or a pound, a buck or a pound. And then I just got crickets. Nothing. I tried it again, like, welcome, MB Avenue, welcome. And again, zilch, nothing. I said, well, don't you know, like Cabaret, the musical, Liza Minnelli and the answer I got was like oh didn't Renee Zellweger play her in a biopic it's like no that's not Liza Minnelli that's her mother Judy Garland anyway so why am I bringing up Cabaret the musical or the movie it was a musical first and then it became a 60s uh, movie with Liza Minnelli and Joel Grey and a really beautiful score Oscar winning why am I bringing that up? Because it all brings us back to those roaring 20s, 30s in Berlin.
Come along with me. We're talking Schöneberg. Remember, Berlin is a city which is built up of many, many little villages. And Schöneberg is one of those villages. And I'm still stuck in Schöneberg. Nothing wrong with being stuck here. I love the place. You have to picture this. This is Schöneberg. There's a place called Nollendorfplatz, which has the, uh, the U-Bahn, the underground, although it's an overground station. You have to picture this in the 20s. In Nollendorfstraße, uh, there is a guy living, there's a Brit American, an author, but he's also a teacher in the 20s, and his name is Christopher. And he later writes a diary about his time in this Nollendorfstraße number 17, and he writes the diaries which later become a book called Goodbye Berlin. In those diaries, he talks about his life, his going out, the hedonistic life of the Schöneberg area. Because let's be honest, roaring 20s, things were happening in Schöneberg. Uh, there were bars, there were cabarets, there was, there was life, basically. And this Mr. Christopher, and his name is Christopher Isherwood, wrote these novels. And the musical cabaret is based on his novels on his experiences because he befriended somebody during his time in Berlin and he later in the novel turned this person into Sally Bowles and Sally Bowles is portrayed by Liza Minnelli in Cabaret. So there you go. So, so I'm trying to, <laughs> in a roundabout way, I'm trying to 17 to sort of say, this is where Christopher Isherwood lived. Now, even if you're not familiar with Cabaret, Christopher Isherwood, um, you might be aware of another novel that he wrote, A Single Man, which was turned into a beautiful and artistic um, movie by Tom Ford and starring Colin Firth. Maybe you've heard of that movie. Um, I think uh, Colin Firth was nominated for an Oscar for that movie. So that was all happening in Schöneberg in the 20s and in the 30s. So you see, you know, we don't have to talk about, you know, the raving and Berkheim. Those things were already happening way before your time. Now, the 20s, of course, ended with the, you know, the Wall Street crash in the 30s. Or, and then, of course, uh, you know, fascism and Hitler and all that started to grow. And that's also the point where Christopher Isherwood said, like, OK, I'd better leave this country. Now, another name you might be familiar with is uh, the one of Marlene Dietrich. That was another character, let's put it that way, that popped up in this Schöneberg area in the 20s. She could be seen in cabaret shows and burlesque shows in, in El Dorado, which was a, a, a famous or an infamous club in, in those days. Um, it's now a organic food shop, but um, it's still there. And there used to be a commemorative plaque. I couldn't find it, but it's definitely still there. Marlene Dietrich was one of those people that became famous because of her denouncing Nazi Germany and fleeing to to America, early 30s, 
but she was made famous and okay now you have to follow my brain again or you have to follow the story again well she was made famous by portraying lola lola in a movie called the blue angel the blaue engel which was a bar in berlin and that bar which is a fictitious bar in in a novel by uh, hermann heine is actually the El Dorado, which I was just talking about earlier on. So it's all, all mixed up together, really, those uh, roaring 20s. Now, just in case, I'm not going to sing, but just in case that you don't know who Marlene Dietrich is, I mean, she's made some, she had like a husky voice. I mean, she was famous for that. She was famous for being glamorous as well. There are a couple of songs like Lily Marlene is a, Lily Marlene is a famous song by her, uh, Where Have All the Men Gone? You know, a very, very important war song. So I haven't really heard about Marlene and Dietrich. It, it is worth while, you know, just googling her and, and, and seeing what she uh, represented for um, Germany just before and during the Second World War. The house that she lived in, um, you can find that in in the Rote Insel, which means the Red Island of uh, Schöneberg. There's also a plaque on the building. I always forget how green Berlin is, and maybe it's because it's always raining. It has been the last couple of weeks or months even. But if you walk with me through the streets, you can see how how beautifully green it is and um, how all those uh, beautiful buildings come to their own right just uh, by the contrast of the green. And they say, I'm a hairy bugger. Look at that building behind me. Well, the sun now really is out. Uh, the rain has finished. My laundry must be finished as well by now. So it's time to uh, go and pick that up. In the meantime, you can see the glamour of it all, the glamorous park up I have, courtesy of uh, uh, an old friend of mine, parked in a parking lot, but it suits me fine. I've got everything I want in my Dean. So I'm uh, looking forward to a part two, a second part of my Berlin stay, because I think I have to stay because it's Euro 24 this weekend. So that means Holland is playing, Spain is playing, England is playing. I forgot the fourth team. Is it France? So it's kind of an exciting weekend, so I'll definitely stay for that. I'll make a second vlog on the Thursday. Yeah, let's do that for the Thursday. And then I'll tell you a bit more about Schönebeck, because I think I will stay in Schönebeck. Just on a side note, Berlin is more than, of course, this one little Schöneberg that I'm staying at. But I hope that you don't mind me showing you a couple of off-the-beaten-track areas or spots that, um, you know, you might otherwise not see. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on Thursday. Looking forward to it. Take care for now. Bye. Bye.